Professor Ladius. Yep. What is Islamization? Islamization it's a newly produced word which speaks to the fault lines in the Nigerian system. We know of Islamization in history as a process by which Muslims of the past engage and interact with cultures and civilizations outside or apart from Islam. Is it, is it about conquest? It's never, 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 ever about conquest. Uh, Islam prospers more in time of peace. Islam never prospers, prospers in Can, time of war. Is Islamization equal to Islamic evangelization? Islamic evangelization, just like you have Christian evangelization, every faith has that evangelistic tendencies. Every faith has that monopolistic view of life. It's about conviction. It's about commitment. Not only conviction, but you could be convinced about something, but you may not be committed to it. Evangelization is all about commitment and conviction. It's not about force. It shouldn't be, and it, it is not with reference to Islam. Whoever says it is about forces for Islam, either does not know what Islam says or is engaged in other agenda which is unknown to Islam, but it finds Islam as an easy platform upon which or around which it could achieve that end. Professor Ladosun, do you. you understand what Obasanjo is talking about? I, you, I also know every Nigerian knows who President Obasanjo is. And whenever he talks, we know what he's actually out to achieve, particularly after he had left presidency. He has been a letter writer. He has been a speaker. He has been a member of, of a political party in Nigeria. At the time, he stopped, he tore his card and said he wasn't going to be a party member of that political party anymore. Reason for that is known to all of us. And that was when what he desired was not given to him. After a short while, he thought, oh, it was time for my desire, for my plans to be achieved on the same platform. Eventually became a party member once again. We know who Did he you is. you say party member again? Uh, well, I think, no. he, I think he, he, he returned got, to the party. Uh, he returned you to... You supported Atiku. Oh, uh, well, I, well the, you, you don't support a, a brand that you do not, that you are not ready to market. You can't support a brand that you, that you abhors. You can't support a brand that you feel uh, will not add value to your life. But his argument came with facts. Uh, the killings in Zamfara, Katsina, migration of death towards the southwest. Are you not worried? Every Nigerian is worried and should be worried about that. What he refers to as Fulanization. Fulanization is a new word created by the political elite, elite to picture, to image one of those challenges we are facing in this country today. But I will say that when people like our former president, with all respect and dignity and decorum, befitting a person of that status, I respect him, I appreciate him, I appreciate what he did for Nigeria. But to whom much is given, much more is expected. President, former President Obasanjo, we believe, even if had issues with the current government, as an elder statesman, he is not expected to go to the market and, and, and unrobe or derobe himself or derobe and unrobe the authority with whom he worked before years ago. Perhaps he has been knocking and nobody opened, so he <laughs> needed to go to the market. Uh, no, no, no. He didn't, he, yeah, if he had been knocking and the door had not been opened to him, it wasn't by going to the market square. Perhaps he has been lamenting and nobody is listening, no, so he it, needs to shout people, more. People, he is not, even if he needed to shout, the, there's an adage in Arabic which says that to every Have speech. you heard about Fulani people on the highway? We've, we've, we've seen it. We read about it every day. Are you not worried? This is, this is a manifestation of a larger malaise confronting this nation. And it's not by going to the church to wipe up religious sentiment to, to to begin to put one section of the country against the other it is not through that that you begin to solve a very serious problem a security problem confronting this nation what do we do there is a problem yeah, fire on the mountain we we all of us have responsibilities aside from those at the center of power president muhammad Bua, and i guess i should say this 
the whole idea of Lanization began to gain traction, consequent upon, emergen upon the emergence of Buhari. Everybody knows he's a Fulani. And there's this rabid hatred for him as a person. And it's dangerous, right? And it's, 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 I will say it. Just like Franz Fanon, you must have read a book titled Black Skin, White Mask. You must have read The Wretched of the Earth. You must have read uh, Ali Mazuri's Cultural Projects I mean, in, in, in the World. Franz Fanon says, he who abominates the black man is as sick as he who adulates him. In other words, when you see evil, you don't, be, you don't begin to celebrate evil. What you need to do is to confront it. Confront it objectively. Use the right approach to apparatus. Use the right procedure to confront it. President Obasanjo had an opportunity to stop the emergence of the canker worm we now know today as the Boko Haram when it was there between 1999 and 2007. So it's a country degenerating, it, right? Since, since its emergence, since its emergence 1999, we have read about the history of Boko Haram. We know how they emerge. We know the factor that led to their emergence. We know the factor that has sustained them up to today. President Obasanjo cannot divest his authority, his investment, its government from the Kankamon we are talking about. So he's not coming with clean hands. He's, we who comes to the to equity should come with open or clean hands. President Obasanjo, for most discerning Nigerians, do not, I mean, does not have that clean hand. 